Hello everyone, Hyper here, and this will be a strategy walkthrough for Mythic Sire Denathrius. I know it's a little late, but still I wanted to share what our strategy was for our first kill um, and kind of help you out if you're still working on this boss. So first things first, this will be a general strategy walkthrough. I'm not going to go super in depth about like DPS healer or tanking. Instead, I will talk a little more about the general approach of the fight, similar to the Ashara video I did back in Eternal Palace. So our base comp is two Holy Paladins, one Resto Shaman, one Disc Priest. Holy Paladins um, are going to be the healers for the melee group in Phase 3, and the Resto Shaman along with the Disc Priest are going to be the healers for the range group. In Phase 1, Generally, everything is super easy. Um, the main thing that you want to focus on is getting one of your druids to zero stacks by the time the first phase ends. That is so they can help you out with roaring, and I will point out when that happens. Um, other than that, uh, shamans and DKs do not need to drop stacks at all, and everyone else should kind of be split up, where on the first and second cleanse, you tend to have a little bit more players dropping stacks, and then any subsequent ones, uh, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, you only have about six stacks being dropped at a time. But at the end of the phase, everyone should be at three or below, except for your DKs and shamans. So let's roll the footage and see how this fight actually goes. A uh, big thing here is your DKs should be using AMZ on these ads. Um, Keep in mind that they happen a little bit closer than two minutes apart, so defensive cooldowns that are two minutes need to be used prior to the first cleansing pain. So I use it about two to three seconds into the fight, uh, and this goes for any cooldown that is two minutes long. So for the first one here, we just cleanse. As you can see, for the first one, we have a ton of um, sins out there, and this is where our DKs and mages will be using cooldowns. Then for the second one, is where we had all of our hunters use their cooldowns because in the first phase realistically you should only be getting one use of two minute cooldowns uh, since you have to stop dps anyway so the second one here you will see get it destroyed pretty quickly as well because we have wild spirits um, and then all the rest are going to be a little bit slower but we're also going to have a lot less sins to deal with the main approach for soaking night hunters is super straightforward all the lines just need to go through the boss on the next one i will pause it and show you what i mean so here we have cleansing pain 3 and as you saw everyone baited the ravage then we took a warlock gate uh, so we didn't really have to move that much um here we have cleansing pain 3 we kill the adds and then we get nine night hunters so i will pause it right here and as you can see, everyone just simply runs their lines straight through the boss. Uh, and you can just pick whichever line you want to soak. Um, they don't do an insane amount of damage. So as long as all of them are through the boss, uh, people can just pick whichever one they want to soak and you should be fine. I don't think we ever had deaths to this mechanic from people not soaking um, unless they were like, you know, way out on the edges or something like that. But if the line is through the boss, it will always get soaked. Um, then we go on here. We get the second blood price. This is um, another pretty dangerous one. You should have your players be using defensive cooldowns on blood prices in this phase. Those are probably the most dangerous mechanic. Um, typically, these sins and the cleanses you will have covered with healing cooldowns, but the blood prices tend to be a little bit sketchier just because there's not enough healing cooldowns to cover all the mechanics that happen in this phase. Um, then on the second Ravage, we move towards the center of the room. You can also start moving towards where the boss will be positioned next because it is very likely that you're still going to bait the Ravage in the correct spot. And once we get to the next spot, again, all the range DPS set up, and one thing that I want to mention is that our tanks, who are standing right here and here, I believe, um, are always double cleaving. So the tanks will always have someone else stand on top of them, so they drop two stacks at a time. Because obviously on Mythic, you need to be standing at least one yard apart from another person, otherwise you drop two stacks and you spawn two sins per person. And if you have three people on top of each other, you drop three stacks and spawn three sins. 
Um, so it's very important that you kind of set up and spread out a little bit and also have people assigned who drop two stacks at a time on purpose instead of just dropping one at a time. Um, again, this one, as you can see, we only spawn a couple. About six to seven is the number that you want to be looking at at any uh, cleansing paints that is not the first or the second one. Then we get blood price number three. A great thing that you can do is if you're a healer or a melee DPS, really anyone in the raid, get yourself knocked towards the wall. You will travel a shorter distance, so you'll be in the air less um, and also get back to the boss quicker. So here, whenever the last set of ads spawn, you want your, the boss around 73, maybe 74%. Then after they die, the boss should be at around 71.5, maybe 72. Um, and you want to stop damage ideally until the Ravage cast starts. Here we actually missed, as you can see, uh, the boss didn't start casting Ravage. But ideally you want that just so two minutes line up perfectly with the next phase. Um, if your if you push the boss too early, two minutes will not be back up at the correct time. So it's going to just mess with your timings a little bit. Now here, um, the main thing to keep an eye on is just get to the boss as fast as possible, do damage, and keep an eye out for anyone that was at four stacks because they might need to be life gripped by the priest. So this is really where we kept our comms very clean. Uh, no one was talking except for people who needed help to get to the boss. You can use freedoms and grips. Then you go down to phase two. So this is really where the raid kind of starts splitting up into two different assigned groups. Our range, most of our ranged DPS move up to this left side corner from Denathrius, uh, where they will be attacking their ad, while the melee DPS go over to the right side corner where there will be a lock gate right here that you can take towards that platform. Um, so we have all of our me melee DPS go to the right with a few hunters also helping out and the rest of the ranged go to the left and attack that ad. So as you can see, I will hit the boss a few times, lock gate gets dropped and we go over to Evershade. Um, here, the main thing is just having assigned interrupts. You will need quite a few interrupts um it is five per ad i believe so assigning your tanks all your melee dps and range dps to help out with this is important and it's also very important to push um the the ad to 66 and 33 percent as fast as possible to spawn these shadows early because if you're kind of slow on the dps you will spawn them late which means you will get gripped away from them while they're still casting and that is where missed kicks will start happening. Uh, so we get gripped away right here. Everyone goes through. All of the ranged, everyone goes through. And right here, this is where you get a set of impales. All the ranged check their debuffs. If they got an impale, then they wait on this side of the platform. They deal with the impale. If they didn't get an impale, then they double back through the gate. And a warlock will drop a gateway for them to go to their add. Uh, while the melee go over to Dusk Hollow. So as you can see here, the impales always go towards the edges of the platform. You want to drop all of these impales towards the edges where it's out of the way. Um, and all the ranged who didn't get the impale, you will see down here at the bottom, they back through. Then the melee go to Dusk Hollow, Sire gets the debuff on it. Um, this is a great place to use defensives on both of these adds. They will be doing a lot of damage. And you want to make sure that your cooldowns are assigned for both of these, well, all of the ads really. Uh, you want to have kind of an even split. For example, on Dusk Hollow here, we have two minute cooldown classes. The DKs were popping their two minutes um, on pull, then at two minutes into the fight, then at four minutes into the fight. So right now we're four minutes and 15 seconds into the fight. Um, so it lines up perfectly. And that goes for the other ad as well. If you want hunters to help out either with Dusk Hollow or the ranged ad, then you want to make sure that their two minutes will be up at the correct times. Both of the ads need to die before this hand happens, so then you get gripped away and you go through the mirror. Um, and this is where the first set of the Koalas will spawn. These are not important at all. 
So one thing that I wanted to highlight here is impale positioning. As you saw right here, there we had impales one, two, three, and four. So Ramornia started going this way, then that way, then that way. So the big thing is to avoid overlapping impales in a way where Ramornia is going to go through you. So for example, if this was, um, let's see, if this was number one, this was number two, and this was number three, then that would be an incorrect order because Ramornia would essentially dash through this number three person, then dash uh, into them again. So really there's no set rule that we used. It was just look at the numbers and stand in a way where you're not going to get run through unless she's actually targeting you. This first set of Cabalists, you have infinite amount of time to kill them. Here we purely focus on boss DPS. Um, at this point, we still have 15 seconds to kill it because they only need to die before this hand of destruction happens. So we're focusing boss DPS because obviously in phase two, you want to get as much boss damage as possible. Um, we just want these Cabalists to die before the hand and get those puddles before the hand, then we can go through the mirror. So that was pretty perfectly timed. Now, the second set of Cabalists is a different story. This one, you need to kill very, very quickly because you essentially need to do two sets of Cabalists before um, another hand gets cast. So we get the debuff on the Cabalists, um, we dot them up, we do a little bit of damage, and then we move on to the next set. So here we use Roar just to get over there quicker. And this third set will be the same story. They need to die extremely quickly. As you can see, they just spawned and there are 18 seconds left on Hand of Destruction. So you want to kill them very, very fast because if you kill them as the hand gets cast, most people are going to get knocked off um, or some people are going to get knocked off. So you want those puddles to spawn before the hand is cast. So these receive hard focus. If you have a few people um, popping cooldowns here, it is also very beneficial. So in general, uh, they should be dying while this massacre is happening or shortly before, depending on how much DPS you have. Um, then from here, again, it's back to focusing on the boss. So this fourth set of Cabalists is the same story as the first set. You have a ton of time to kill them. Um, so the main thing you need to be focusing on is the boss. One thing that I did want to highlight, if we go back, is this set of Impales is going to be a little bit sketchy. This is because Ramornia will be on the exact opposite side of the platform. So as you can see, the line is going all the way through the melee. Um, DPS right here. So you need to be very, very careful and take a look at that line. Uh, this line can be either on the right side or sometimes it will also go on the left side depending on where the number one spot is standing. Uh, so just keep an eye on that at all times because this is one of those sketchy moments where you, you don't see Ramornia and you need to look at these kind of weird indicators that are not very easy to see. So we deal with that set of impales, and now it's all about boss damage. You want to get the boss to about 42% before the hand is cast. Um, we have the hand being cast in 20 seconds. I actually get hit there. Um, so we have 20 seconds to do another 2% damage. Depending on how your DPS are using cooldowns, two minute cooldowns can either be used there, or they can actually be delayed until the last phase. So it is very common nowadays that you actually have to stop DPS here because you're just doing too much. And if that's the case for your guild, then you want your DPS to be holding those two minute cooldowns until the very start of phase three, instead of using them here at the end of phase two to get a little extra boss damage. So you get gripped, you go through. Um, and this is really where you want to push that boss to about 40.5% right there. We have 1.4 seconds left on transitioning the boss to phase three, and the boss is at perfect percentage. Now this is where your ranged and your melee will split up. As you can see, our ranged DPS are standing right here, and they will simply move towards the boss as soon as he teleports. Our melee DPS, on the other hand, are standing here, and we will have to double back through the mirror as soon as phase three starts. Boss teleports, we get a roar, melee doubles back through the mirror, and range goes uh, upstairs. 
Um, at this point, I want to point out who we have actually downstairs in the mirror phase. So we have our two Holy Paladins. They're typically the healers that you want to bring here. We have all of the melee DPS and one, um, one mage to help us with Bloodlust, because obviously if you pop Lust in the downstairs phase or in the upstairs phase, the other phase doesn't actually get it. And then obviously we have our two tanks. Um, now, if you have less melee DPS, then just assign an extra range down here. Um, Hunter or, or Fire Mage is also pretty decent since they have infinite mobility. So, but in general, I feel like most guilds will have the number of melee DPS required. So as you can see, we had two, four, six, eight, nine people in the downstairs phase, 11 people in the upstairs phase. Um, you can also do a 10-10 split. It doesn't matter all that much. So, now we get to positioning. So this is where things become tricky because obviously you can never run over each other in the downstairs phase. If a player from the mirror phase runs over a player from the upstairs phase, they instantly cancel each other and die. So the entire phase three is about doing this dance where you're constantly avoiding the other group, but at the same time dealing with mechanics that they're spawning for you. So this means that you need to come up with a solid system for how you deal with the seeds. Uh, for us, the system is always rotate to the right when facing the opposite camp. And there will be a few exceptions to that rule uh, around Ravage, but I will point that out. But for these easy ones, the rule is always the same. Rotate towards your right side, then soak towards your left side. So if I got a seed right here, I would rotate to my right. The range DPS will do the same. Uh, drop their seeds right there and right there, and then everyone would move to soak them. So you will see how this actually plays out in a little bit. Another thing to point out is that in this downstairs phase, you get knocked through the boss for the, for the shattering and for the blood price. So instead of being knocked backwards, you get knocked in the direction of the boss. So as you can see, we get the three seeds here. I will pause. Um, the melee one went towards the ranged. The ranged ones came towards the melee. Uh, so it's a very easy like rotation that will happen the same way every time. Then you wait for them to clear and you soak it. A big thing to do for melee DPS is always positioning the boss between the two seeds. So regardless of which seed you're soaking, you can still hit the boss. Because obviously if, if the boss was positioned on the far side, then um, only one of the, of the, or half of the melee could be hitting the boss. Second seed, super easy set. Um, you deal with it the same way. You rotate right uh, to soak it. Now after this second seed, you get a shattering and you need to line up. So this is where the melee DPS and the range DPS will actually be in line with each other. So as you can see, the boss is casting Sinister Reflection. Our range DPS are down here, melee DPS up here, and that is the center of the room. So you want everyone to be in a line uh, with each other to kind of bait this reflection. And once it happens, it spawns and it faces a certain way, then your range DPS will take off towards this right side, um, and seeds will go up here and up here, while your melee DPS will run straight through the middle of the boss, and the melee seed will be dropped around the center of the room. So we get the reflection, it spawns, and the, as you can see, the range DPS are taking off over on the right side while the melee DPS just go through the middle. Very simple. And this is a great spot to use a roar for your ranged. Um, depending on this, these massacre lines, you might get pushed out of position a little bit. Ideally, I want to drop this seed as a melee DPS uh, right here, but obviously that's covered by massacre and the range DPS want to drop it on the edge of the platform. So we drop, and then as soon as massacres allow, you go to soak. Uh, these range seeds got dropped in the perfect spot. You want to drop them along the edges. That is the best way. So you want seed one, seed two. Um, that is the perfect way because if you drop a seed here and a seed here, that means when you're soaking this outside seed, and the boss is positioned where it is right now, you will get knocked off the platform. Um, so it's very important that the seeds are positioned along the platform instead of being positioned like outside and inside, if that makes sense. 
get knocked. And this is where we get blood price too. This is a very dangerous one. Uh, this is where you want to use cooldowns. Um, and this is also where melee DPS will be lusting. If your DKs are running the Deadliest Coil Legendary, this is a good lust. If they're running the Frenzied Monstrosity Legendary, then it is a little bit better to lust at the beginning of this phase instead of right here. So let's backtrack a tiny bit to talk about the seeds that happen right there. So you get the Blood Price, and right after the Blood Price, you get Seeds. Knocked. So this Seeds is a little bit different. You want your melee DPS still deal with it the same way. Uh, they just go to the right of the boss towards the ranged. And the ranged DPS want to drop theirs along this edge from the previous Ravage. So ideally you want um, one on one side of the lip, one on the other side of the lip, um, but fairly close together so the melee can move and soak them pretty quickly. So the range will come in to this green marker that we have down and soak this, and the melee will move out towards the left and soak these two. It is important to soak both of these seeds before the knockback happens, because they explode very shortly after the knockback. So we're soaking, as you can see, soak one, soak two, they both got soaked before the knockback happened. Um, and that is again a great spot to use defensive cooldowns, health, health pots, health stones, because it's going to be very sketchy. Now we're getting to the second Ravage, um, and this is another very important spot that strategically is probably the hardest part of this phase. So your melee DPS should be around this jewel, uh, this little thing that's right here we call the jewel, um, and your ranged DPS want to be a little bit further in than halfway through this. So if you draw an imaginary line that cuts off the room like this, your ranged DPS should be on this side of the line. Um, because if they're standing over here, they might bait the Ravage on the wrong side. Your melee DPS should be standing um, anywhere really in this area, but obviously the closer you are to the range, the less you have to actually move out of the Massacre whenever it happens. The big issue with this Massacre is that you will get Ravage, Massacre, and the Knockback that all overlap. So the ranged DPS will be taking a Warlock Gateway from here. It is not a max range gateway, I will point it out when it actually happens. It is a pretty short gateway, but its only purpose is to get you clear of the first set of Massacres so that you kind of have a clear area where you can get knocked back without having to worry about getting knocked into a Massacre line. And this set is where we use all of our immunities, Ice Blocks, uh, Bubbles, if, you're, if you have Paladins, they should be bopping DPS who can't deal with this mechanic. Generally, it should be like one of your tanks if they don't have any mobility. For us, it was our Brewmaster tank that was getting bopped. Um, you know, if you have Windwalker DPS, Enhancement Shaman, any class that doesn't have an immunity or some mobility effect that can mitigate the knockback, they need to get bopped, uh, ideally. So let's see how this actually plays out. We get the reflection. As soon as it spawns, the ranged DPS will be taking the gateway. Bam. And as you can see, this gateway is very short. That's where it starts. This is where it ends. So it is not a max range gateway by any means. It, its only purpose is to dodge these first sets of massacres and then the ranged clump, who's standing right here, will shortly back up, back up, back up, as new Massacre lines are spawning. Because you should never have lines behind you, um, so it should be a clear area for the whole ranged DPS to move together as more and more lines on, are spawning on top of them. So the melee DPS ideally want to clear the first Massacre lines um, before the Shattering Pain happens. Um, and as you can see, there's bops, ice blocks, any immunity that you have. So now let's talk about the seeds that happen during this set. The melee seed should ideally be right here. Um, obviously, it's not going to be perfect because massacre is happening. So really anywhere in this area, you can drop the melee seed. The ranged ones should be along this edge. Anywhere along that edge is fine. Um, you just don't want to get close enough to the melee. So we dropped it here and here, which are perfectly acceptable positions. Um, oh, that was actually a melee one. 
So in general, you can see that um, the ranged one should just be along this line right here. Melee ones should be up here if you get one or two, um, depending. It's, it's kind of RNG. So from here, the fight becomes super straightforward. And if you have the DPS, you're going to kill it. There's nothing else that really kills you at this point. Um, boss positioning, you just tank it along this edge in the free area. Melee DPS in general should be standing behind the boss, getting knocked away while your ranged DPS are at the side here getting knocked backwards. So you get knocked, then you get a blood price. Uh, this blood price, if you have any defensive lifts, use them. There's nothing else that happens in this phase that can kill you. So, you know, survive this blood price and you win. Now you get the last set of seeds. These follow the same rules as the first one. Melee goes to the right towards the ranged. Range goes to their right towards the melee. So you drop them there and there. Then everyone rotates and you soak. Again, these you have to soak quickly before the knock actually happens. Um, there's the knock and you want to stand in a way where you're not getting knocked towards the each other. Um, the last set of seeds spawns. These you just want to get away from the boss. So as you can see, the ranged ones are all the way in the back of the platform there. The melee one moved out of the melee clump. These you don't soak because they explode after the Ravage goes off. So realistically, there's absolutely no point in soaking them. You either kill the boss or you wipe. So we have right here, we're a little bit behind on DPS. Um, you get the last set of Ravage and Massacre cast. Here it's just a frantic, um, you know, dash to kill the boss. And you either kill it or you don't, depending on the DPS that you have. So that was generally... Um, how you approach this fight. If you have any questions or anything that I can clear up, you can ask it in the comment section below and I'm more than happy to help you. Or you can also join my Discord uh, where you can ask questions and I am more than happy to help you out. Again, thanks for watching this video. I really hope it helped and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.